This is an ABC 7 special report. Uh, we have an update now on the condition of those five circus performers who were injured during a circus Sarasota rehearsal yesterday. Pedro Reese, the uh, co-founder of the Sar Circus Sarasota Arts Conservatory, and Nick Willenda are speaking right now to the media. Let's listen in. And that's the good news. I equate it to our tornado. And you well aware that after a tornado, everybody comes together. And the circus is resilient. And circus artists are resilient. And the show will go on. Today, we have Nick Wallander to address questions that you might have. So please, ladies and gentlemen, Nick Wallander. Good morning, everybody. First thing I want to do is thank Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, for keeping us safe. Uh, yes, there was an accident, and no, it wasn't his will. But uh, the Word of God says that he works all things for good for those who love him. And I can promise you that all of us that were there love him. Uh, and there were definitely angels there. Uh, I want to thank all of you guys for being here. You guys have shown immense love and support for me and my family, my crew. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for... Uh, following us along this this hard journey that we are that we're embarking on, um, I also want to thank the first responders. Um, they were amazing. They were here quick. They were on it. They did an incredible job. Uh, Sarasota County Sheriff's Department. Uh, every step of the way, they've had my back. Uh, they've been there to support me and um, and keep me safe as well through this again through this difficult time. Um, it's been a rough rough couple days for sure. Uh, Without question, yesterday was the, the roughest day of my life. Um, and I thought I had some rough days in my life. Of course, we, you know, we all say it'll never happen to me. Uh, although I knew that it was a possibility, I never realized it was a reality or it could become a reality. Um, obviously shock, um, some confusion. Uh, you know, uh, I don't know how to put it into words, um, but you know, all along, uh, I've always said, our family through triumph and tragedy, we've continued on. And I believe that, um, that words are powerful. And um, there was triumph through this tragedy. Yes, it was tragic, uh, the entire incident. Um, it was a nightmare, but there's triumph through it. There were eight of us on that wire. We'd been training for about two months our intentions were to break a Guinness World Record, which we have broke on multiple occasions training in this tent. Um, we had every intention of doing that this evening uh, and carrying it through the run. Um, accidents happen. You know, we were halfway out on the wire and uh, a couple people in the front started to get kicked around and lose their balance. And uh, we don't know yet what happened. Um, there's thoughts that my, um, somebody might have fainted um, we just we just don't know. Um, again, it's the reality of what we all live. Um, we take life for granted often. Um, we're so blessed that no one was was uh, injured to the point of not being able to walk again. All of their uh, all of their their injuries they will fully recover. I've been assured by some of the best doctors in uh, in the country. Uh, some of them have flown in from around the country uh, just to take care of my family. Um, and I've been assured that everybody will fully recover. If you don't believe in God, you better start now because uh, it's a miracle. Uh, you know, one of the guys was up over 40 feet high on top of that pyramid, and he'll walk out of the hospital on his own will today. He had three broken toes. That's a miracle, guys. One of the guys fell from about 30 feet. He walked off out of the ring immediately. That's a miracle. Um, I was able to catch the wire. I've, as I've told you guys time and time again, I've trained my whole life for that. We all train for that. Um, it, it doesn't always work out, but we've all trained for it. Uh, me, uh, my cousin Blake was able to grab the wire, and uh, Nick, one of our other performers that's performed with us for several years, we were all able to grab the wire and hold on. Um, but uh, five did come down to the ground. Again, two of them are, are, will be fine as of today. They've got some bumps and scrapes and bruises. We all do. Uh, I'm extremely sore from, from the, the impact that I took, and it was nothing compared to what those guys took. Um, the other three, including my aunt, will fully recover. It, it is only broken bones. Um, there is uh, no spinal, no serious spinal injuries whatsoever. Um, everybody has full use of all of their extremities. 
Uh, you know, my biggest fear, of course, when that happened was, I, I guess I'll back up. When it happened, I grabbed the wire. I climbed hand over hand to that platform, got on the platform. I don't remember how I got to the ground. And one of my guys who was there thinks that I, he believes I jumped from the, from let go from the wire. I feel like I did, but I, I don't know if I did or not. Again, I just went into rescue mode. What am I gonna do? Who can I help? Uh, I went and checked on everybody individually, uh, found out who was worse. My sister probably had the, the, the majority of the injuries. Um, and I was able to go and console her and hold her until the EMTs came, rode with them to the uh, in the ambulance to the hospital. The entire time she was completely coherent. Uh, she was telling me, uh, you know, I don't understand what just happened. Why did it happen? Uh, she counted to 20 for me. She said her ABC. She told me her date of birth. She had all the, the important vital signs, as did uh, the other individuals. Um, again, uh, there's four in the hospital right now. One will be released within the next couple hours, we believe. Uh, they're just checking his toes out to make sure that they're not going to want to put a cast on him whatsoever. But uh, I was just there with everybody. I just spoke with everybody. Um, and, and there's three words that I've lived by, and you guys know them well because all of you guys know me well, and they're never give up. And of course, that goes through your mind. There's a struggle of, do I, what do I do? Do I perform tonight or do I sit it out? So I decided to make that a decision of those that were in the hospital and the others that were on the wire with me. Um, and I've asked every one of them individually, privately, separately, and everybody uh, unanimously said, yes, we want you to get on that wire again. That's what we do. That's who we are. Um, so this evening, I will be performing uh, in this evening's show along with some of the other guys that were involved in that accident. Um, you know, you always hear the show must go on. Um, again, it's hard for people to comprehend, but this is life. Uh, this is my passion. This isn't, um, this isn't a job. This isn't a career. This is who I am. Um, my great grandfather said life is on the wire and everything else is just waiting. And um, that's the way we live. Uh, that's where I feel alive. Um, so tonight's performance clearly will be in the honor of those uh, that are injured. It is for them. Uh, it is also for my ancestors, many of them who lost their lives performing. You know, my great grandfather was involved in that accident back in 1962 when the seven person pyramid fell where they weren't so lucky. And two of my uncles were killed and one was paralyzed from the waist down. We pray before uh, every performance uh, as a family. Um, we're not all family direct, but uh, I consider everybody in that act my family as much as anyone else. Um, maybe not blood related, but they're family. Um, and I can tell you that prayer works. It does. God was surrounding us. It could have been much worse. Uh, again, I want to be clear, it wasn't uh, God's will that that accident happened in any way, but he will get the glory through this. You know, the fact that everybody is going to walk out of that hospital on their own will uh, is a miracle in itself. Every, that everybody's alive is a miracle. Um, God was surrounding us. Um, again, it's going to be a road. Um, their injuries are all vary from uh, broken feet, uh, broken pelvis, um, broken uh, a couple areas of an arm broke, um, some facial fractures. But um, I'm assured by, again, these great surgeons that they will fully recover. Um, again, I don't know what else to say other than it, it's a miracle. The doctors said it's a miracle. Uh, you know, the, the head of, of surgery at, at um, of emergency surgery, trauma surgery at Sarasota Memorial said, people don't live from accidents like this. They were prepared, they set up a triage, they were prepared to accept five people that they didn't know if they were gonna live. Everyone that went in that hospital was talking when they entered those doors and completely coherent. <laughs> God's, God watches over us. Um, I think that's about all I have to say, but I will take some questions. I won't be doing any one-on-one -on -one interviews, not at this point. Uh, we could possibly do something later on or tomorrow, um, but I've got a wire to get on, so I don't have a whole lot of time to do one-on-one -on -one interviews. Um, Will it be challenging? Yes, of course. Um, but again, for my family, for my ancestors in their honor, I will do it and I will succeed. Uh, and we'll put on a great show. My great grandfather after that accident, I started to say in 62, uh, he snuck out of the hospital because he had broken ribs uh, and a couple other injuries and he snuck out of the hospital and got back on that wire and, um, and performed. So again, this is what he would want. Uh, I actually have a, a walk tomorrow at Amelie Arena. I'll be over 80, 80 to 100 feet high. It's for a private event. Be about 20,000 people there. 
and I was debating whether I should do it or not. And my dad sent me a text and said, you know what? Uh, I got your back. If you're, if you're going to do that walk, I'm there with you. And that was my reassurance because I was struggling with it in my mind, talking with my wife. Um, I, want to, I want everybody to understand this is a family decision. This isn't my decision alone. As I said, I talked to everybody that's in the hospital and that is not. I talked to my parents, of course, uh, to make sure that I had their blessing before I said, you know, yes, we're going to go back. My wife, of course, uh, is uh, probably the most important one of all. And I know if I have her support that that's what I'm supposed to do. And uh, I fully have her support. Um, again, it, it's not easy, um, but you know what? We all go through trials in life, and uh, I've learned the trials that I've gone through have made me stronger and a better person. And uh, I know that this situation will not only make me a better person and a stronger person, but hopefully inspire others. If you can't be inspired by somebody falling that high and living through it, then um, I don't know what will inspire you. Um, I always have said that, uh, you know, that I live by those three words, never give up. And, and again, I was talking yesterday, are you going to get back on that wire? And, um, if I want to be an example to people that are struggling with cancer or that are dealing with uh, financial struggles or marital struggles and I'm telling them not to give up and I give up, then what kind of example am I? What kind of role model am I? I've been blessed with an amazing platform uh, and I choose to, to be a man of integrity and, and hopefully be an example to our next generations that no matter what they face uh, to not give up. And that, that's my goal. Uh, that's been my goal in life. I said it recently. When I started Walking the Wire, it was about impressing girls and making money. Uh, it's not about that anymore. Uh, it's about inspiring people, uh, inspiring people to do get greater things and th that they can overcome any challenge. Um, there's no legacy in uh, impressing girls and money. That all goes away when you die. Uh, but if I can leave a legacy by maybe la lasting, a lasting imprint in someone's mind um, that, uh, that through any tra challenge that you face, you can make it through, then, uh, then I'm doing my job. Uh, and my life will uh, far live, outlive, uh, my legacy will far outlive my life, and that's important to me. Gary, you got a question? Yeah, Nick, I got some calls today from people who wanted to know when you were rehearsing, there was no net. I know there's a psychology behind it, but... Yeah, so... That's right, so there's no net. When we rehearse, we don't use a net. Um, and here's why. We rehearsed at about 12 feet high for the last month and a half. Um, yes, you can sustain injuries from 12 feet, of course you can. Uh, we're all very athletic, and that was reiterated by the doctors over and over again, that if it wasn't for the muscle mass that we had, we would have had much more, uh, many, many more injuries, all of us. Um, a matter of fact, the guy who dropped from 28 feet is in the gym four hours a day. He's a goofball. That's all he likes to do. But you know what? That saved him. He landed on the ground. He's got some bruised heels, some swelling in the ankles, but he was released within three hours of an MRI, a CAT scan, and, and some x-rays. Um, but uh, we don't train with the net. Um, there is, it's been taught for generations that uh, a net can be a false sense of security. I have an uncle that landed in a net, bounced out, and was killed. Um, so again, it's about all about training and preparing. And uh, you know, you can train and prepare to drive your whole life, but there's a good chance that 90% of us here are going to get in a car accident. It's it's just the reality of what we choose to do, what our passion is. Um, our passion outweighs the dangers, the risk, I guess, um, because we love what we do so much. But we don't. We don't train with the net. Uh, we were the wire was rigged at 28 feet. Um, and again, we were four layers high, so you have to figure five foot at least per person. Uh, you know, the top girl was at uh, 28 plus 15, so what is that? 38, 43 feet. Uh, that was her, way, her, her hips were at 43 feet. So, again, um, it's a miracle. Yes, ma'am. So, how is the show going to change? I know show must go on, but is the eight man pyramid still going to happen? No, so the eight man pyramid won't happen, although I'm trying to convince them to get out of the hospital and do it with me. Actually, one of them yesterday who's hospitalized said, get me out of here, I need to get back on the wire. Um, so, uh, no, there's, there's no way that we could pull that off at this point, uh, but it'll, it'll involve me, my cousin, a couple of the other guys, again, that were involved in that accident. My wife will be involved, and then another, another girl that works with our family. Um, so it'll be a smaller act, um, but I can assure you that people will still be impressed by what, by what they see. You may have answered this question already, but... Then don't ask it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> is there any stunt that you will not try that you think is too dangerous? Look, again, I, I, as I said, everything I run past my family, they're my buffer, my barrier. I, I um, you know, I've been blessed with a mind that, uh, that doesn't give up uh, and that's willing to take any challenge. And if you tell me it can't happen, then I'm going to make it happen. You know, Niagara Falls took changing a law in the United States and one in Canada that was over 100 years old just to do it. Um, I did it because they said I couldn't do it. 
um, and change those laws and I did it legit and I did it with permission and with integrity and respect the entire time. Um, I'm sure there's some things that I wouldn't do. I haven't found them yet. Um, but again, what people don't understand is I don't see it as a stunt. I see it as my passion in my life. That's what I live for. Um, I live, die, eat, breathe, and sleep performing, circus, wire walking. Uh, that's, that's who I am. It's through and through. I can't, you know, it's, it's in my blood. Seven generations, 230 years of my family. It's who I am. Yes, Kim. Yeah, I mean, we always learn from our accidents. We learn from our past family accidents. Um, will it change training? I, I don't know. That's a good question. We'll obviously all sit down and figure out what, you know, what can be done different. Um, you know, my great grandfather got up and did that seven person pyramid a few years later. And, and to be honest with you, I was scrambling to figure out if we could do it tonight, if I could find the right people. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if it'll affect training or not. Uh, we take risks. That's what we do. Race car drivers take risks and they get in accidents. It's what we do. Praise God that we're all alive and we're all still walking. I mean, again, that's all I can say is, you know, God is a great God. Billy? Uh, a couple of questions. Can you give us the names of the folks who were up there on the wire with you yesterday? Also, what position were you in on the wire? Sure. Um, so as far as names go, I just want to respect their privacy, so I don't want to give them out yet. Uh, I need to get their permission. I wanted to ask before and I forgot to. Um, but um, I was in the back position, so I was at the helm, basically. I was the one who was calling all the shots. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had to watch the thing play out in front of my eyes in slow motion. Uh, I've probably watched it a thousand times, uh, not by choice, but that's just the way it ha things happen. Um, uh, I didn't sleep much last night because it just kept replaying and replaying and replaying. It is... Uh, it's not a great feeling, but again, I've got a creator that I can cast all my cares upon, and that's what I continue to do. And, um, you know, I always talk about being positive and not letting your mind go to a negative place, and that's what I continue to do. Obviously, you have to be realistic. I don't deny the fact that an accident happened. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I try to continually, continually block out that negative with positive. Yes, it's a reality that it happened, but, uh, you know, how can we make it better? How can we make it safer? And we did it. Uh, you know, many, many years uh, since 62, we've done it uh, without, without incident. Yes, sir. There probably will be. Uh, yeah, there's a chance that there will be. It's something that we're still working on. Again, I was at the hospital till, uh, you know, three in the morning last night and then back there again this morning. Um, so, yeah, uh, I, I'm guessing there probably will be an acknowledgement. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, tonight's performance is a performance for performers. Uh, everybody that will be in this tent this evening, or 90, 75 percent of them, will have the same blood that I do. Uh, generations and generations of doing what I do. Um, their outpouring and their support has been overwhelming as well. Uh, we're all a family. Um, if you're in this industry, you're a family. Uh, there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of uh, professionalism, uh, professional competition. Um, and uh, that's healthy. Um, and there's obviously feuds between family members, etc. But all that goes away. We're, in the end, we're all family, and that all goes away. And, and again, I've had outpouring from uh, from many people in my industry. Um, most of them. I've got 700 texts on my phone that I haven't looked at. I think, um, and hundreds of emails. So. Again, um, the love that they've showed is overwhelming. So this evening we'll be performing for them. Um, so they understand it. They have that passion that we do as well. Um, but of course, yeah, I mean, our goal will be to, to acknowledge them. And, and again, we're doing it for them. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So yes, uh, do we do the pyramid more than one time in rehearsal? Yes, we do. Generally, uh, and in practice, uh, about 12 feet off the ground in my house, uh, we were doing it about 16 times a day. Uh, the reason why we do that is to know that we can do it once, uh, once we get up higher. Um, and we did it without incident. Um, so again, other than saying it's an accident, it's an accident. There's, uh, there's no other explanation. Accidents happen. Uh, we're in a risky business, and uh, we train in some, some very tough conditions even. Um, so again, we don't know what played into it. We don't know if it was, it was, if it was, um, it was, it was hot. It wasn't 150 degrees, but it was warm. If that played a role in it, um, we just don't know. Uh, again, to me, it felt like 
like some, someone passed out, blacked out, just momentarily, but that's all it takes. Uh, once, you, once you black out, if you try to maintain your balance in that pyramid, you're not gonna be able to, to regain because now you start kicking everybody else around and everybody has to compensate for that. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, look, so, so you're not necessarily trained to know how to fall, but we're all very athletic. Um, and um, we all, uh, most of us are very limber um, and agile uh, and like cats. Um, so because of that, it's just sort of natural that you, you, uh, you know, I have be been blessed with a mind where my heart rate slows down during traumatic situations. Uh, um, or any stressful situation, you know, Grand Canyon, Niagara Falls, my heart rate, it's always monitored, it slows down. Um, so I'm able to just take everything in and, and sort of assess the situation uh, and stay calm, completely calm and composed. Um, so uh, again, say, that being said though, I, I really don't know how I got to the ground. I'm, I, I, I may have climbed down. I just know that there, one of my best friends was just outside of the ring and I was in the ring before him and I was the one who was up about 15 feet out on the wire hanging on. Was anybody video recording it at the time? You know, I'm not sure. Uh, there were people in the tent, um, but, but at this time I don't know if it was videoed or not. Um, I'm hoping not, um, but we could also learn from that too. Um, look, if, if the opportunity presents itself, I absolutely will. Um, again, um, it's, it's a drive that I have in me. I can't explain it. It may sound stupid to most. It may sound foolish to most. It's who I am. I mean, you don't tell Tiger Woods to put down the golf club because he had a bad game. He keeps on golfing. It's just the way it is. What's your mindset going into tonight? Um, Look, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be emotional. Um, the first time I'd been in that tent was three seconds, 30 seconds before I walked out here since that accident. Um, it's tough. It'll be tough. Um, not tough in the sense of am I going to make it in any way or I wouldn't get up there. But, you know, clearly there's, there's been people that are hurt. Um, I love those people dearly. Uh, they're very close to me, and uh, I'll be thinking about them. So that's why it'll be emotional. Yes. How many people that fell or were on the wire were part of your family? Uh, there were four on the wire uh, that were part of my family, four of the eight. And um, two of them, the, the two females, were injured. Your aunt and sister? Correct. Okay. Yes. Were there any near mishaps in practice in the last few weeks? No. No, it's gone smooth. I mean, look, what we're doing is dangerous. and it, It's stressful and, you know, it's a mental game and all that. So. Uh, you know, we build a core team around us of people that have strong minds. And um, there was nothing that was, um, no, there was nothing. Look, we talk before every performance, before every practice and every show, right before that pyramid, I will look up to everybody. After the announcement's made, the lights come back up, I look at every individual. Do you feel confident? Do you, are you ready to go? Um, and I get the acknowledgement. And they all are told over and over and over again that if they ever feel uncomfortable, I could care less if the president sitting in the audience were not getting out on that wire, period. There's not a second thought. We will not take that first step. I will not hold any grudges. In fact, I will love you even more that you're bold enough, that you're willing to speak up. Um, and uh, so that's stressed over and over again. And everybody in the hospital has stressed, look, Nick, we all take these risks. We all know what risk we're getting into. We all do this because we love it. And this is part of taking that risk. Uh, they all acknowledge that. They all recognize that. And it's the reality of what we do. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, look, it's, it's something that I t encourage people to practice in everyday life. You know, um, I remember getting in, uh, I, t I talk about my, in my book, Balance, about um, the marital struggles that I had. And it was all about my mind and letting my mind wander places and worrying that if my wife, and it was a little bit of the way I was raised, but if my wife went to the mall and we were in, in, uh, in a bad part of town, uh, and she went to the mall, that she wasn't going to make it back safely. So I didn't want her to go to the mall. Um, I didn't want her to go dancing because I was jealous and worried that she was going to find another man. It's just 
just the reality. That was my, that was, and it was all my mind. And through that situation, I learned the power of our mind. And if we can control that negativity and keep it positive and, and, and counter that with, no, my wife loves me and she didn't say I do and I'll love you for better or worse for no reason. Um, it makes life a lot easier. And the more that I said, you know what, the more I let go, the more she didn't want to go do that stuff because she wanted me with her. Now, she wanted me with her before too, but I have two left feet, so I wouldn't go to the club with her. So it was my fault anyways. But that's the reality of it is the power of the mind is strong. And, um, and I learned that through situations like that uh, and to always focus on the positive and not the negative. Uh, the more that we focus on negative, the more we're drawn. It's like when you're driving in a car and you look off to the right. As you look off to the right, you're gonna, you're gonna veer that way. Um, so if you look towards negativity, you're gonna be drawn towards negativity. And if you choose to not allow your mind to go that route and to counter that with something positive immediately, then you will go the right direction. Um, and again, that works for everybody, from cancer patients uh, uh, to people uh, struggling in a marriage, it doesn't matter, it's universal. That's the one thing about the God I serve, is it's universal. Whether you believe in him or not, his, his, his word still works. Um, so he, he loves you whether you believe in him or not. So again, that is, uh, that's, that's the power of the mind that God has given us. Um, well, we've been listening to Nick Walenda there talk about uh, the events of yesterday afternoon when uh, that eight-person pyramid collapsed on the high wire and they all fell to the ground. Uh, it was an emotional and determined Nick Walenda talking today. He called yesterday the roughest day of his life, but that it, it is a miracle that everyone survived that fall, and he says he's relying heavily on his faith. Uh, we learned today that one of the performers fell from about 40 feet and only suffered three broken toes. Uh, four are still in the hospital, one expected to be released today, but all of them only suffered uh, bruises and broken bones, no spinal injuries, head trauma, or anything like that. So that's uh, great news that they all will recover fully. Nick says he will be back on the high wire tonight. It is a dress rehearsal at Circus Sarasota for all of the students at the Sailor Circus and the area circus alums. They will all be there for, to watch the free performance, a dress rehearsal, and probably an unnerving one for Nick Valenda and his team as they get back on the wire to perform a smaller, more simpler show and not that eight-person pyramid. The shows, by the way, are still set to begin tomorrow at Circus Sarasota. We'll have much more coming up at noon and again in our evening newscast. Now back to regular programming.